This CT protocol review is on CTA of the abdomen and pelvis. There's a few reasons that we would perform a CTA angiography scan of the abdomen and pelvis. We're really looking for an aneurysm, dissection, stenosis, or some kind of anomaly in the abdominal aorta or its branches. In the image to the right, the arrow is actually pointing at a massive aortic aneurysm, and this aneurysm has actually ruptured. And so that large gray area surrounding the aorta is a hematoma. This kind of thing doesn't happen very often, but this is the kind of thing that we're looking for when we perform this scan. So how do we perform this scan? It's actually very similar to imaging of the thoracic aorta, but with a few exceptions. The scan type is helical for all of the normal reasons. It's faster, allows us to follow the bolus of contrast. The slice parameters are also very similar to imaging of the thoracic aorta. We'll use a 2.5 millimeter slice thickness for viewing, but as usual, we'll use thinner slices for post-processing. Since we are looking at the abdominal aorta, we'll scan from above the level of the diaphragm all the way down to below the level of the pubic symphysis. If we were scanning just the abdomen, then we would stop the scan short of the pubic symphysis, but that's pretty uncommon. Almost always, abdominal aorta scanning will include the abdomen and the pelvis. As with all angiography studies, contrast enhancement is vital to successful imaging. We'll usually use about 150 milliliters of iodinated IV contrast. Because we're looking at the anatomy of the patient's vasculature in the arterial phase, we do need to inject at a fairly rapid pace, so we'll be looking to inject at 4 milliliters per second or more. It's also important here, as with all angiography studies, to time the bolus of contrast very precisely. And so we're usually going to use bolus tracking. We'll use bolus tracking by placing the ROI in the abdominal aorta at the level of the diaphragm. And so when that area of the aorta is brightly enhanced with contrast, that means it's time to start the scan and we'll follow that bolus of contrast all the way down through the pelvis. Keep in mind that there is a specific direction we should scan this patient's anatomy. We'll scan from superior to inferior, that is from the diaphragm down to the pelvis, which makes sense because that's in the direction of blood flow, and therefore that's in the same direction as the bolus of contrast. Since we're looking at the soft tissues and the vasculature of this patient, we'll want to reconstruct the scan data into the standard algorithm, and we'll display this information in the traditional window width and window level, a 400 window width and 40 window level. As with all angiography studies, post-processing is an important part of this scan. In fact, one of the defining characteristics of an angiography study is the post-processing. Here I have an example of three different post-processing procedures that are commonly used for angiography imaging of the abdominal aorta. The image to the left is a simple coronal reformation of the entire study, and the red arrow is pointing at a sac-like aneurysm just above the bifurcation of the descending aorta. The image in the center is also a coronal reformation, but this is a MIP image, a maximum intensity projection. And you can see how this really makes the image look different. The arterial structures really stand out. Significant calcifications in the aorta and common iliac arteries are also very visible, and we can still see that sac-like aneurysm at the level of the aortic bifurcation. In the last image to the far right, we're looking at the same patient, similar view, but this time this is a 3D reconstruction. Specifically, it's a volume rendered 3D image, and the red arrow is still pointing at the same area of concern. This is an aortic aneurysm, a sac-like aneurysm at the level of the aortic bifurcation.